Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Yam Nagaraju, working as assistant professor in the department of uh, CSE and ML in the Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, uh, Hyderabad. So today uh, we are going to discuss one of the uh, uh, most important topic, uh, which is related to writing of AI programs, uh, which is nothing but the production systems. So why I am saying that it is an important concept because the production systems are otherwise we can say some kind of product means in the production systems. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, how the production rules will be framed. So why we require these production uh, production rules that is very very important. So whenever the AI agent, sorry, whenever a, uh, AI developer wants to write some uh, kind of AI programs which which we need to feed it to the AI machine. So uh, the AI programmer must have to follow these kind of production rules. Means we can say that uh, with the help of production rules only the AI developer means the developer or the programmer he is going to convert that. Uh, uh, production rules into the instructions uh, and he is going to make it as a program so such such kind of program we are feeding it into the ai machines or otherwise we can say ai agent which is going to exhibit the intelligence means here uh, the production rules are very very important even in the uh, earlier uh, lecture also we have discussed that uh, uh, it is completely a rule based system why it is called as rule based system means uh, in AI programs, uh, initially a given state will uh, will be given means a state will be given to us and we need to move towards the uh, desired state. Okay, so in this case, what happens whenever the AI agent wants to uh, move from one given state to the desired state, so in between he has to take the decisions. That means taking of decisions completely depends upon the rules. That's why we say that it is completely a rule based means. The AI agent, if he if he if that means the AI agent wants to uh, solve particular problems, then definitely have to make use of the rules. That's why every time we say that it is a rule based system. So in the production systems, we are going to discuss more about uh, this production rules, and we are going to see how these production rules will be uh, helpful for us uh, in order to uh, make the developer to write the AI program so efficiently, and which uh, we can uh, which later will be feeded into the AI machines to exhibit the intelligence so let us dive into the concepts directly so in the previous lecture we have discussed uh, two important examples where these production systems are the production rules comes into picture so the first example <coughs> okay so the first example is just just chess playing game and the second example is the water jet problem means in the earlier lecture uh, we discussed about the problem and we discussed about uh, the state space representation of a particular problem so during the explanation of that state space representation, we have uh, talked about uh, uh, the chess playing game means uh, uh, we try to describe the uh, state space representation for the chess playing game as well as uh, the state space representation for water check problem, including some production rules, which will be helpful for us in order to solve this particular problem. Okay, so if we look into the concepts, <coughs> if you look into the concepts, for especially if it is a chess playing game, so what happens is the uh, there should be some rules right uh, there should there should be some rules which can be helpful for uh, for the ai agent to make the legal moves here when a ai agent wants to play the chess uh, first of all he, he need to learn means he need to understand what are the various legal moves that are possible while writing while playing the game and once it is done means once he could able to understand what these legal moves are then he has to concentrate on winning of the game Okay, so how this can be happened means whenever the uh, there, there is a possibility for, for, for writing uh, the rules, there is a possibility for writing the rules, then that based upon that rules, then we can uh, we can make the AI agent to uh, play the chess game. <coughs> okay, to play the chess game. So in this case, uh, so whenever uh, see if, if you observe in this part in the second diagram, it is very clear that we have moved the soldier from this point to this point. So what does it mean? It is a legal move. So how this legal move will be happened means the internally there should be a rule which which allows the AI agent to move the soldier from this point to this point. Means how many number of possibilities, means how many number of possible moves are there for all those number of possible moves we should suppose to write the rules. That's why we say that every time the AI problems are completely the rule based problems. Why? Because if you want to make a move Right. If you want to make a move in the state space, represent in the state space, definitely there should be a rule uh, related to that particular thing. Then only uh, there is a possibility for making a move. So, 
in this case we can we can we can say means if the ai agents means if we want to make the ai agent to play this this chess game first of all we need to understand how many number of board positions are available in this so if you consider this one as a 8 by 8 array okay then the possible number of board positions it will be 10 to the power of 120 so in the earlier session in the earlier session we have discussed that it will be very difficult to write these number of uh, rules so what will be the solution we should suppose to uh, identify we should suppose to identify a particular scheme which will be very much simple in order to represent these number of rules why because being a human writing these number of rules will be very difficult and even if we try to write them we cannot guarantee that we are not we are going to write the rules without any mistake so some some kind of complexity is there in order to represent or in order to uh, define these number of uh, rules so until and unless we define these rules we cannot make the ai agent to play the chess game so in this case we discussed that in the earlier video that we should suppose to represent we should suppose to represent the rules in the simplest form okay so uh, how this simplest form will be there uh, will be uh, that we are going to discuss in the upcoming modules and uh, if you talk about the other example uh, what we have discussed is it is not it is nothing but the water check problem so whatever the uh, number of rules means there are two, totally 12 rules are there we what we call them as the production rules means by taking these production rules we could able to make the uh, programmer right to convert these production rules into the logic we need to understand one important point first uh, you see initially there will be okay there will be the knowledge which will be represented in the form of english we can say we, uh, it is a english representation of the knowledge means this knowledge is related to the playing of either a chess game or solving the pro problem of this water check so this english representation later on we need to convert okay into the mathematical representation or we can say uh, up to now we can say that we need to convert that them into the production rules the knowledge need to be converted into the production rules okay so this uh, in order to convert this uh, one, once we get the production rules next our duty is we need to convert them into the logic okay logic is nothing but one kind of uh, programming where uh, we generally make use in order to write the ai programs so we can say that it is a, a pi a pil we can say programming in logic where we are going to consider this logic programming in order to write the uh, in order to write the production rules in the form of the instructions so this is the actual sequence so in the in this actual sequence directly we cannot move into the writing of the logic until and unless we have the production rules so while solving the problems means if we if we if you are trying to solve particular problems so before that our primary duty is we need to keep the knowledge ready and then we need to convert that knowledge means we need to represent that knowledge in the form of production rules so when the production rules are available means um, they, they are uh, available to us then we can convert that production rules into logic by using some pro logical programmings okay so we can say that here prolog is one of the logical programming lisp is also one of the logical programming means either by using lisp or prolog we can easily convert these production rules into uh, the instructions the programming instructions okay so that's why if you talk about this uh, water check problem uh, in the earlier lec lecture we discussed about these 12 uh, production rules so what what does it mean there are 12 possibilities I mean there are two 12 possibilities in the state space when we when we are trying to solve this water check problem coming to the production systems so as i mentioned that the production rules are very very important so uh, where these production rules we are going to see means uh, in the production systems we can say <coughs> so so let us try to understand what do you mean by these production systems and how it will be useful for us in order to represent the production rules so we can say that these production systems are the useful representations nothing but uh, they are going to be very much useful to us in order to uh, structure the ai programs just now i mentioned means if if the programmer wants to write the programs means write the ai programs so what he has to do he need to take the help of the production rules so how that production rules are being structured means by using these production systems okay that's why we say that production systems are most useful in order to structure the ai programs so how he is structuring means by facilitating okay uh, he is he facilitates the describing of the problem statement and also he is going to perform the search process 
means we can say that the production systems are very much helpful for us in order to describe the problem statement what we have and also it is going to help us in representing the per uh, performance of the search process okay so how it will be then we, we are going to see in the upcoming slides now coming to the uh, point so just now i uh, mentioned one more important point that is the production systems uh, main intention is it has to uh, showcase or it has to represent the rules in a proper way in a systematic way so that it will be converted into the uh, logical representations so we, uh, in order to make understand of this production system suppose we need to understand what these production rules are how these production rules looks like so in the water check problem we have seen 12 production rules but we don't know how that rules have been framed so here we are going to see the particular syntax where we are going to uh, represent means how we are going to understand how we are going to represent the rules in the production systems okay so uh, we say that every rule okay every rule it is going to have two parts so one part we say that it is a left hand side part and other one is called as a right hand side part okay so if you clearly understand okay if these rules we are going to represent means if we if you are making use of the prolog programming in this prolog we are going to represent these rules in the form of predicates in the form of predicates or we can say that it is the first order predicates means in the production systems the production rules are going to be represented if, by using this particular syntax which is going to have the left hand side as well as the right hand side so what the left hand side of the rule is telling all about and what the right hand side is telling all about let us see so we can say that the left hand side it is going to tell about a pattern that determines the ability of the rule so what that rule can do that is going to describe by the left hand side of the rule so what about the right hand side it is going to describe about the operations to be performed if the rule is applied okay for example think that you have selected a rule which is appropriate to a particular state okay so in that case if you apply that rule to that particular state so what are the next actions need to be taken what are the actions need to be taken so that we are going to see in the right hand side so that actions we are uh, describing in the form of operations means the left hand side is going to tell about the ability of the rule what the rule can do right and the right hand side is going to tell all about the operations to be performed if that rule is applied if you if you see the same description in the simple words it will be like this lhs is going to describe the applicability of rules and rhs is going to describe the operations to be performed okay so what do you mean by this if we consider means if the ai agent considers that thinks that the left hand side of the rule is matching to the particular state then if we apply so what are the actions we need to perform <coughs> okay so that's why we say that every time the left hand side is going to describe the applicability of the rules okay whether that rule is applicable or not that we are going to see by observing the left hand side of the rule if that particular rule is applicable to a particular state then what are the actions need to be taken that will be represented in the right hand side okay for example uh, we can say in the simple words for example uh, if it is raining if it is raining okay if it is raining then what to be taken uh, what what is carry umbrella carry umbrella so it will be like this so what is the left hand side of the rule is telling whether okay it is going to tell about the uh, ability of the rule so what the ability of the rule here it is going to describe the applicability whether it is applicable or not means for a particular state means if it is really raining now then that means that to this particular state this this is applicable so in this case what we are doing we are uh, we are representing at the right hand side that is carry umbrella okay <coughs> so we are going to see more examples uh, related to this one in the upcoming uh, sessions clearly coming to the components of the production system so as i mentioned production systems uh, are the backbone of the uh, backbone of the we can say backbone uh, in order to represent these production rules why because until and unless we have the production rules we cannot support the uh, developer in order to convert that production rules into the logic so that's why we need to understand the various components that a production system will have 
So the production system is going to have three important components. So the first component is called as a set of rules. The second component is a knowledge base and the third component is a control strategy. Okay, so what do you mean by this uh, set of rules? Let us try to see. So let set of <coughs> okay. So in the component of production systems, we are going to concentrate on the set of rules. So what this set of rules are telling all about? It is going to create the human-made rules to store, sort, and manipulate the data. Means by using this set of rules only, we could able to okay, we could able to convert. Means we could able to make some kind of actions. We could we could able to make some kind of decisions. So such kind of decisions, what we are doing, either we are creating or we are applying. So why we are calling it as human-made uh, rules? Why? Because these rules are provided by the human humans only. Humans in the sense here, the experts who are specialized in that particular domain. So what we are doing in order to set these particular rules, we are uh, continuously uh, communicating with the experts means who are specialized in that particular domain, and we will try to gather more knowledge about the problem. So whatever the knowledge we have gained, that knowledge we are going to convert into the rules. Rules are otherwise we can say they are the production rules. So the main intention of using this component, which is set of rules, is nothing but either to create new rules or to apply. So these rules you can store, you can sort, or even you can manipulate. Okay, means by using these particular rules, either you can store the data, or you can sort the data, or you can manipulate the data. And coming to the second one, knowledge base. So what is this knowledge base? Knowledge base is nothing but uh, in the previous session also we discussed that knowledge base is nothing but a uh, repository, or otherwise we can say it is a database repository where generally we store the knowledge. Okay, so. <coughs> The knowledge base is uh, main intention is uh, the, uh, means this component's main intention is it is going to capture the knowledge. It is going to capture the knowledge that is supported that is provided by the human experts. So by the by using this uh, knowledge only, the AI agent is going to take the decisions. Okay, so uh, we can say that knowledge base is a certain kind of repository where we are going to keep the knowledge which we have collected from various experts. Okay, so uh, here uh, we need to uh, one important point is there that is uh, for every problem statement or for every problem which is related to a particular domain, we are not going to communicate with only one expert, right? Continuously, we are going to communicate with the different experts in the iterative process. Means it is not just one time process, just communicating with an expert and collecting the data and collecting the knowledge and keeping in the knowledge base. So what happens is uh, initially we. Uh, Means initially we will try to create a basic knowledge base, a basic knowledge base by communicating with the human experts. Okay, so then after once we have the basic knowledge base, then we will concentrate on the refinement of the knowledge base. So that's why in the knowledge base, whatever the knowledge we are having, that knowledge is that knowledge uh, collection and the knowledge refinement is a continuous process. It is an iterative process means regularly we, we will concentrate on the refinement of the knowledge only. Means the knowledge base, <coughs> because of this only we are telling that the knowledge base main intention is it has to capture the knowledge that is provided by the human experts. So by this, by the help of this knowledge only the AI agent is going to take the decisions. Okay? He is going to make the decisions. So once the decisions is made that means that the AI agent has applied some kind of rules. So when such kind of rules is applied, then there will be a change in the position of the AI agent. Okay, so the change in the position will be definitely in between the given state and the desired state. Okay, so let us come to the third important component, which is called as the control strategy. So this is also very, very important. What, what, why it is so important means, uh, let us try to see this one means this control strategy is going to tell us which rule mu must be applied next. That is important. So just having the number of rules in your production system, uh, sorry, number of rules in your knowledge base does not make any sense until and unless you follow a systematic procedure to uh, apply them. Means the question is when we need to apply what kind of rule? That is very, very important. Means which real uh, rule need to be applied at what time? So who is going to support in this particular case means the control strategy. 
the control strategy that's why we are saying that the control strategy it is going to tell us all about which rule need to be applied next so why i have used th this word next that we will come to know now <coughs> and one more important functionality of this uh, control strategy is it is going to resolve the conflicts it is going to resolve the conflict why because sometimes to a particular state there will be two rules which are applicable okay for a particular situation or a particular state there there will be more than one rule which are applicable so in that case which rule we have to select means when two rules are applicable to a particular state that means that some kind of conflict has occurred why because we cannot uh, exactly tell that which rule to apply and which rule to ignore so in this case also the conflict strategy is going to support us that's why if you compare if you make a comparison of this set of rules and knowledge base even the control strategy is also having a very uh, a main uh, role we can say why because it is going to tell all about which rule need to be applied at what time and it is also going to resolve certain kind of uh, conflicts when more than one rule is applicable to a particular state <coughs> Okay, so coming to the features of the production system. So we are having four different features of the production systems. The first one is the simplicity. The first one is the simplicity. So it means the production systems are going to represent the production rules in the simplest form. In the simplest form in the sense, even that kind of representations will be easily understand even to the people who don't have any uh, proper knowledge about these things. So what kind of simplicity it is maintaining means all the production rules in the production system they are going to represent in the form of if then structure. Okay, so when such kind of representation means when such kind of if then representation is uh, uh, done then it will be very easy uh, to read. <coughs> okay, that's why we are saying that this kind of representation or this kind of structure improves the readability of the production rules. Okay, so means there should not be any uh, basic knowledge about this production rules. Still, the user could able to understand what these production rules are telling all about. Okay, for example, I can say like this: If okay, if uh, uh, it is raining, it is raining. Okay, uh, and uh, we can say temperature. Temperature is greater than forty degrees. Then Okay, then what we are doing? Carry, we are telling that carry umbrella. Carry umbrella. So even a layman who reads this particular uh, representation of the production rule, still he could able to understand what these production rules are telling all about. So such kind of simplicity, these production systems are maintaining while representing the production rules. Coming to the second one, which is the modularity. Modularity in the sense the knowledge is available in the discrete uh, pieces. We can say what do you mean by discrete pieces means here the collection of independent facts. Collection of independent facts. So this is the one important word which we are seeing for the first time. So just now we discussed that it is the rules. Okay. So whenever we are representing these rules in the production systems. In the production systems, or otherwise, we can say in the knowledge base. In the knowledge base, so what happens? We are going to see two different things. One is called as facts, and another one is called as the predicates. <coughs> okay, facts and predicates. So, what do you mean by these facts, and what do you mean by these predicates? So, the general representation means the knowledge which is too general, and we are representing. If we are representing with with the help of some kind of programming. A logic programming then we say that it is a fact if there are any condition based kind of things are there so such a kind of representations we say that it is a predicates okay for example i want to represent a general statement saying that marcus is a man so simply what i will do i will represent in this way man in the bracket i mention it as marcus so what happened it became a fact it is not a predicate why? Because it is not talking all about any kind of relations. Sorry, any kind of conditions. So it is just making us to represent certain some general information, telling that Marcus is a man. Okay, that means that <coughs> if I say the production systems are maintaining this modularity, that means that you are going to see all these kind of facts which are independent to each other. 
that's why we are saying that the knowledge is available in the discrete pieces coming to the third one which is called as modifiability modifiability in the sense even for this uh, for this knowledge base or for production systems you can add how many number of rules you want you can do it means adding of rules or if you think that some of the rules which are already available are not appropriate so you can remove them also even if you are adding and even if you are uh, deleting such kind of rules or such kind of facts even it is not going to reflect on the performance of the whole system <coughs> it is called as modifiability okay All right and the fourth one is we can say knowledge intensive so what do you mean by knowledge intensive means the completely completely the knowledge base is going to concentrate only on the storage of the knowledge itself it is not going to concentrate on the descriptions or we can say the information related to the programming only it concentrates on the representation of the knowledge so that's why we say that it is every time it is knowledge intensive so these are the four important features of the production systems one is simplicity modularity modifiability and knowledge intensive coming to the other thing that is the four classes of the production systems okay so what is the first four class first class so it is called as monotonic monotonic is one of the class so what this class is all telling all about means the production systems means the application of the rule never prevents the later application of another rule so why it is like this why because just now we discussed that the a uh, knowledge is represented as a discrete pieces discrete pieces in the sense applying of one particular fact or applying of one particular rule is not going to reflect on the application of the other rule that's why we say that it is monotonic and even this monotonic is also can be can be called as linear also okay so in the linear what happens is generally uh, in this particular case we need to discuss one important point that is whenever there is a problem if it is an ai problem and which we feel that it is more complex then what we do is we will we are going to uh, do the concept of decomposition we will try to do the concept of decomposition decomposition in the sense here we are going to divide this problem into several sub problems and we will try to resolve each and every problem individually so in this case if i say it is we are we are following one class of production systems that is monotonic then we can say that it is a linear approach it is a linear approach means the application of one particular rule means one particular rule is not going to reflect on the application of the other rule coming to the second one actually okay second one which is called as uh, partially commutative so what do you mean by partially commutative means here whenever you apply a particular sequence of rules whenever you apply particular sequence of rules and the action of that particular rule making the state to convert from x to y then automatically its related permutations are also going to transform the state x into state y so it is called as here the partially commutative the other one is non monotonic so non monotonic is completely different with the monotonic so in the monotonic we are selling that uh, telling that we are following the linear fashion of uh, resolving the problems but when it comes to non monotonic it is not like that so mon non monotonic we are going to implement without the ability to perform the back tracking so what do you mean by this back tracking we will come to see now okay so in the non means whenever you follow this particular class of production systems then we can say that if we are going to identify the means we are going to reach to the desired state without uh, uh, without implementing this concept of back tracking so we can see we can simply say that it is not the linear one it is the non linear one okay it is non linear one so we need to understand when we are going to uh, implement the back tracking that we will try to see now the other class is which is called as commutative commutative in the sense problems in which changes occur but can be reversed and in which the order of operations is not critical means the sequence of operations how you are applying is not going to reflect on the solution solving uh, while solving the problem so such kind of class we say that it is commutative okay so this these are the four uh, classes of the production systems now coming to the other thing what the production system is going to provide to us <coughs> okay 
So the production system Okay, so the production system is going to provide us the overall architecture. Okay, so it is going to provide the overall architecture and what this architecture is doing, uh, doing us means it is allowing us to write the rules. So rules which are related to a particular problem means how to resolve that particular problem for that one we are means we are, the production system is going to allow us in order to write such kind of rules means we can say that the production system it is going to provide the overall architecture okay in the architecture what is happening it is going to it means it is going to have certain kind of components in this architecture production system architecture which will allow us in order to write the rules so what these rules are these rules are we are going to you make use in order to solve some certain kind of problems Okay, so that's why we are saying that the production systems are allowing us in order to write the rules that define particular problems to be solved. Okay, so if you talk about these production systems, so uh, first of all, we will try to uh, recap the uh, important point about this problem solving. Okay, so before writing the production rules, so what generally we do? <coughs> okay, before writing the production rules, what generally we do is we are going to define the problem in the state space nothing but we say that it is a defining of the problem statement so, sorry problem state space so while defining the problem state state space we need to define even the starting and the goal state <coughs> what do you mean by the starting and goal states means what is the given state what is a given state is nothing but the start state and what is the goal state is nothing but here our desired state okay means uh, before writing the production rules or before representing the production rules our primary duty is we need to define the problem state space by including the start and goal states and also this is important set of operations set of operations in the sense if you if you talk about the water jet problem we have seen 12 uh, different production rules okay and if you see in in other problem some some kind of operations will be there okay means the set of operations are going to be differ okay based upon the problem statements okay we cannot say that every time all the problem statements are going to have the same set of operations so that's why if you pick up a specific uh, problem statement then your uh, our primary duty is we need to define that problem state space and we need to talk about the starting state and also the goal state along with the set of operations Okay, let us try to take one example. For example, uh, think that you are trying to resolve the problem which is called as a eight puzzle problem. Okay, eight puzzle problem. We know that uh, there will be nine tiles will be there, and uh, uh, these tiles will have certain kind of representations: one, two, four, three, five, six, seven, eight. Think that this is a given state. Okay, so what is a desired state? So the desired state is like this. Okay, the desired state is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and okay 7 and 8 let us think there will be one tile which is empty which is used in order to make the moves so this is nothing but our state space representation this is our state space representation of course i have given only the partial part of the state space representation we are going to see each and every uh, uh, statement or each and every step which we follow in order to uh, move from the given state to the desired state so that that entire thing will be called as here the state space state space of the eight puzzle problem so in this case what we have done we have defined the given state which is nothing but the start the start state and also we have defined the goal state which is nothing but this one the goal state and later on we need to represent the set of operations also so what do you mean by set of operations means what are the operations that are applicable to this Okay, so just now I mentioned that by, by making use of this empty tile, we need to rearrange the numbers in such a way that we can get the uh, desired, uh, desired state, nothing but the gold state. So what are the set of operations that are applicable here means either you can make a move towards left side, you can make a move towards the right side, you can make a move towards downside and also you can make a move towards upside. 
So these are the four possible operations that you can do in this particular case. Okay, in this particular case. Why? Because the tile is the empty tile is in the center. For example, think that the empty tile is in this particular area. So what happens? You can make a up move, you can make a okay right move, and, and only these two are applicable. You cannot make the left move, left move is not allowed, and also you cannot make the down move. Down move is also not allowed. Okay, means based upon the empty tiles position, we are going to define what are the operations that are applicable in this case. So what happens if you uh, extract, means if you try to extract the second step of this problem solving, then we can say that we are going to get three uh, different, four different things. Okay, we can, we, we can say that there are, we are going to get four different things. Means by making the left move, what is the uh, next state we are going to get? If you make a right move, and if you make a up move and if you, if you make a down move. Okay, so we can say that this graph means if this representation is going to have four things in the next level. Means if you make the left move, this is going to come. If you make a right move, this. If you make a up, if you make down, these things. So while defining the problem state space, even it is our primary duty to define even the set of operations also. So the, just now I mentioned the set of operations are going to be differ based upon the problem statement you are selecting. Coming to the next one, conducting of the search process. Conducting of the search process. So what, for what thing we are doing the search process in order to identify the path. <coughs> okay, in order to identify the path between the initial state and the goal state. So if it is the identification of path, we cannot consider, uh, we cannot treat this eight puzzle problem. So what happens here, we uh, we need to consider some, some other point. What is that? We need to uh, means the problem which is having the initial state as well as the goal state and there are some different paths in this case. Okay, there are some different paths. Okay, there, there are some different paths. So in this case, what happens? We need to identify. Means especially in this case, we are going to perform the search operation. So in this search operation, what is our primary duty? We need to identify the path. So we, in this case, what happened? This entire thing will becomes the state space. Okay, in this state space, right? Where uh, our primary duty is, we need to perform the search process and we need to identify the path which leads us to the goal state. Okay, that's why <coughs> we are telling that we are performing the search activity in order to identify the path between the initial state and the goal state. Okay, if your problem statement is related to only the identification of path, it will be fine. So any path you can select and you can identify. But if it is the optimal, means if you want to identify the optimal result, optimal result means in the sense, if you are looking for the identification of the shortest path, again, this is going to change. But in this case, it's never mind. Why? Because either you are identifying this path or you are trying to identify the shortest path between the initial state and the goal state. But in these two cases, our primary duty is we need to perform the search process. We need to conduct the search process. Okay. So that is the second thing. Coming to the control state uh, strategies, we need to uh, concentrate more about these control strategies. So in the components of the production system, we discuss these control strategies as one of the uh, major component of the production system. So let us try to understand more clearly what these control strategies are telling all about. Okay. So we can say that we have completely ignored. So what is the thing we have ignored? We ignored that how to decide. Means how we are going to decide which rule to apply next. Which rule to apply next during the process of searching for a solution to a problem. <coughs> okay, just now we discussed that the control strategy is going to help us in order to select appropriate rule. Means which rule, rule, rule need to be applied at what time. Theoretically, we discussed, but we didn't concentrate on how this control strategy is going to help us. Okay, so this question, why this kind of question is arising here? Why? Because when there are more than one rule. So when there are more than more than one rule, it will be very difficult to identify which rule need, need, which rule to be applied at what time. So it is very uh, it is very clear. So what is that clear? Means we are going to see how such decisions are made will be critical on how quickly a problem is finally solved. Okay, for example, think that there are two particular rules, for example, rule one and rule two, 
which are applicable both to a particular state so in this case what happened a conflict has been arised so how we are going to resolve the conflict means either by selecting r1 or by selecting r2 so in this case how quickly you are able to select a particular rule that is going to decide how fastly you are going to solve the problem okay so this point is telling all about that one only coming to the requirements <coughs> the requirements of a good control strategy so how what happens is the first primary requirement is it should cause the motion means whenever you apply a particular rule definitely there should be a change in the position of the ai agent okay right so we say that the first requirement of the good control strategy is it should cause the motion and the second requirement is it is to be systematic means the selection process and applying of that rules is also should be so systematic finally we can say that it must be so efficient in order to find a good answer so what happens <coughs> sorry so what happens if uh, the uh, requirement the second requirement is not fulfilled means if you are not following any systematic process in order uh, while uh, selecting the appropriate rule so what happens so if the control strategy is not systematic so what happens we are going to explore some unless sequences sorry useless sequences we can say so what do you mean by this useless sequences means we are going to get even the paths but which are not making us to move towards the goal state for example think that from the initial state there is one particular path which will makes us towards the goal state along with this several other paths are also there so if you won't follow a particular systematic process to select the means while selecting the appropriate rules then what happens you are going to move to another path means you are going to select mean the ai agent is going to select the other path which is not making us to move towards the goal state so that's why we say that if the control strategy should be so systematic so that it can not make any unnecessary uh, operations here <coughs> it cannot make any unnecessary decisions okay so the, definitely the control strategy should be so systematic okay the requirement that a control strategy by systematic corresponds to the need for global motion as well as the local motion just now we said definitely means whenever the control strategy is so systematic definitely it is going to make a local move okay local move is nothing but moving from one state to the another state and also the global move global move means the move which will makes us to move towards the goal state okay so these things are very very important that's why we say that the uh, the control strategy should be so systematic <coughs> let us try to understand some of the examples means uh, how uh, we are going to say that the control strategy is so systematic okay so what is the first step we are going to do is construct a true tree with the initial state as its root okay right and second one is we need to perform we, we need to generate all the offsprings of the root by applying each of the applicable rule to the initial state means what happened first we have selected one root okay means we have we are trying to convert a uh, tree okay <coughs> okay so what we have done first we have identified or we have created the initial state thinking that it is a root and then after we need to generate okay we need to generate the next level of the nodes next level nodes so what happens now each leaf node each leaf node means these are the two leaf nodes here for each uh, two uh, leaf nodes what we have to do we need to generate all its successors by applying the rules that are appropriate means whenever you apply the appropriate rules we are going to get the other level of the tree so these are the, the other level of the tree is nothing but the possible moss Okay, the possible knows most. So if you follow this kind of strategy, so we say that this kind of search process is a best first search process. Okay, we will try to see one example and we will understand how this uh, tree can be represented for a specific problem. <coughs> you try to understand. So this is these are the two uh, tree representations. One is the first level representation, and another one is the two level representation. Representation. 
means if you say that you have followed a systematic control strategy then we are going to construct means we will construct these kind of trees so these these trees are representing the problem of uh, sorry the problem of water check okay water check problem so if you talk about this one means if you talk uh, about this uh, water check problem initially two checks are given and each and every, uh, both the checks are completely empty that's why we are representing it as 0 and 0 and next we need to generate the offsprings means the generate the next level of the uh, possibility so what are the next level possibilities here one is means either you can fill the first check which is whose capacity is for 4 gallon and you can keep the second check ideal like that only so other other possibility we are having is by keeping the first check empty like that only you can fill the second check with 3 liters of water means from the initial state means from the initial state given to you means both checks are empty you are having two possibilities one possibility is either you can fill up you can fill up the first check with 4 liters of water or you can fill up the second check with 3 liters of water okay so next we we will continue representing the state space so in this case what happened whenever it is 4 comma 0 so what are the possible possibilities are there three possibilities are there so what are those three possibilities by keeping the first check like that only so you can fill up the second check with the 3 liters of water or otherwise otherwise you can do one more thing that is you can remove the complete water from the first first check and again you can make two checks empty or otherwise means the other possibility is you can remove the water from the first check and you can keep uh, pour that water into the second check so we know that the second check's capacity is only three gallons so what happens whenever you fill this second jack, that jack is going to have 3 liters and the first jack is going to have 1 liter water. <coughs> okay, so for this one, for 0, 3 also we are having 3 possibilities. So like this means if you are following the very good or systematic control strategy, we are going to see this kind of state, state space representation. Representation in, uh, we, say, we, we can say that this is a kind of tree representation. So coming to the algorithm, so if it is the best breadth first search algorithm, so what we do initially, we will try to apply the rule. <coughs> okay, so whatever the rules uh, are applicable to that particular state, we apply that rule and we will try to generate the new state. Means if you are following a very good control strategy, definitely the application of that rule will cause certain kind of motion. Motion means it will makes the AI agent to move from one state to the other state. Okay, so that's why we are selling that, telling that whenever we apply the rule, so what happens, we are going to generate a new state. Okay, in order to uh, store these states, we are using a particular uh, thing which is called as node list. So next what happens is whenever we get the new state, we are going to compare that new state with the gold state. Why? Because until and unless we make the comparison, we will not come to know that whether we have reached to the gold state or not. So that's why first we will try to apply the rule and we will generate the new state. Then we will try to compare that new state with the gold state. If the new state is matching with the gold state, definitely we will quit and we will return this state. Telling that our search process is successful and we could able to move from the given state to the desired state or uh, moving from the initial state to the gold state. So otherwise what we are going to do, otherwise we are going to add the new state to the node list and we will continue the same process okay, so this is the breadth first search algorithm coming to the backtracking so just now uh, initially means in the starting of this lecture we have discussed the word this backtracking means in the non monotonic reasoning okay which is one of the class of the production systems means when you apply certain ki such kind of uh, uh, class uh, class non monotonic then it will not makes us to implement the backtracking Okay, so what do you mean by backtracking here? So what happens whenever you are uh, having a termination of a path? Whenever you are having a termination of path, path, termination of the path in the sense that you have reached to the dead end. Okay, for example, think that from here, okay, there are three possible paths are there. And then from here, again, some more paths are there. 
so what happens when a, whenever you apply a different rule means which is the rule which is not applicable to that particular state what happens the ai agent position is going to move to this particular state but what happened there is nothing here so that means that it is a dead end so in this case what happens we need to perform the back tracking back tracking means come back come back to the state where we have moved to that particular state so coming back from the dead end is nothing but here the back tracking okay either this back tracking can be considered as a chronological back tracking or in the simple words we can say that it is just a back tracking means the uh, the form of back tracking generally means whatever we discussed so far it is called as a chronological back tracking because the order in which the steps are undone completely depends upon the temporal sequence in which the steps were originally made okay if if such kind of thing is there say we say that it is a chronological back tracking otherwise simply we say that it is just a simple back tracking coming to the depth of first search so as we know that uh, the depth of first search we are not going to uh, extract all the possibilities okay we are not going to extract all the possibilities this kind of thing will not be there we will try to extract only one possibility and later on we will try to extract one more possibility we keep on going like that so this is called as here the depth of first search okay so uh, through this process also you could able to identify the solution <coughs> you could able to get the solution but there is a difference means uh, uh, means there there is a, some kind of difference means uh, some kind of differences in the results may occur if you are selecting the breadth first search and if you are selecting the depth first search so what is the differences for that one we need to understand what are the advantages that are uh, applicable means that uh, that are there when you apply this breadth first search and what are the advantages we have while applying the depth first search let us try to see so this is the example so what happened instead of uh, trying to extract all the possibilities we are having we are just just extracting only one possibility okay in the earlier case what happened in the breadth first search even we have seen the other possibility that is here 0,3 but this kind of representation we are not going to consider why because it is not the breadth first search okay the breadth first search algorithm is going to extract all the possibilities but here the depth first search is going to consider only one possibility okay but in both the cases we can say that uh, there is a chance to uh, move towards the gold state okay but some kind of complexities are there we will try to understand now so what happens if the advantage means we, if you talk about the advantages of depth first search so what we can say that it is going to require it is going to take less memory it is going to take less memory why because it is not going to trans, uh, traverse among all the nodes that present in the tree so that's why representation of the visited nodes will takes only less memory <coughs> okay so by change we can say that the dfs may find a solution without examining much of the search space at all for example think that uh, from here okay if our goal state is only this one it's uh, so what happens the depth first search is going to identify are going to reach to the goal state in the very quick time but what happens if it is a breadth first search it is going to take more time why because it is going to traverse among all the nodes present at each and every level until and unless it finds the goal point okay so if any of the chance if the depth first search could able to identify the solution then we can say that it is the fastest way of reaching to the goal point <coughs> okay dfs can uh, search can stop when one of the solution is found means if there is only one goal state and if that goal state is identified by the depth first search then the entire process is going to stop there only it is not going to traverse among the other nodes present in the other side of the tree coming to the advantages of the breadth first search it is not going to get trapped exploring a blind alley so what happens if the depth first search is following one particular uh, corner of the tree and if it could if, if if it could not able to identify the goal state so what happens here we can uh, we can say that this process has been failed so what the breadth first search advantage is means it it anyhow it is going to identify the goal state why because it is going to traverse each and every node that present in the so that's why we say that if there is a solution 
okay if you are following a very good uh, control strategy and if the gold state is available in your tree representation then definitely we can say that bet for search is gar guaranteed to find such gold state and if there are multiple solutions means for some some problems uh, related to ai there will be multiple goals so in that case also this bet for search is most useful for us why because it is not going to stop whenever a gold state is identified it is going to search among other nodes also in order to see is there any other gold states are available or not okay <coughs> coming to the travel uh, traveling salesman problem so we will try to understand how this uh, uh, production rules uh, are uh, applicable in particular application so if you talk about the traveling salesman problem uh, what the salesman's main intention is he has to visit each and every city given to him so uh, generally for example think that the given state is n equal to 10 so what happens there are 36 lakhs 28800 possible routes are there so we can say that this kind of problem is a too critical problem uh, which is going to take even some times lifetime in order to identify which is the shortest route between the given cities why because the travel uh, the salesman's main intention is he has to travel among all the cities that are allocated to him so in this case if it is a regular process he is going to look for the shortest path among the cities but if the uh, salesman has given 10 cities to move so he is going to get 36 lakhs 28800 possible routes <coughs> so in order to identify the shortest path he has to search among all these possible routes and otherwise he is not going to find which is the shortest path so identifying the shortest path among these 10 number of cities we can say that it is a very complex problem it is a very complex problem which is going to take even lifetime of the human to understand to identify which is the shortest path okay so that's why in order to uh, overcome such kind of problems we are we are taking the help of uh, one uh, process which is called as the heuristic search okay of course this heuristic search process and heuristic search techniques we are going to study in the third module more clearly but we will try to give some kind of introduction to this heuristic search okay so heuristic search <coughs> okay the, uh, in order to solve such kind of more complex problems we are going to make use of this heuristic search so what this heuristic search will do we can say that heuristic search is a technique which is going to improve the efficiency of the search process it is going to improve the efficiency of the search process so this is a word that has taken from the greek right which is called as heuristic which is nothing but to discover okay we will try we will try to take one simple example and we will understand how this heuristic search will improve the efficiency of the search process okay so some some kind of limitations are there uh, while uh, while using this heuristic method but uh, we are not going to concentrate uh, in this particular uh, video we will try to uh, clear uh, talk about this heuristic search method limitations in the upcoming videos clearly okay we will uh, we will try to take the example how we will try uh, we will understand how this heuristic search method will help us in order to identify the uh, path between the given points <coughs> for example think that here this is a graph given to us right uh, and this is the initial state given and the gold state given so think that you are making use of this heuristic method okay so just now i told that heuristic method is nothing but a technique right which will makes us to identify the path between the given points so this heuristic method is going to take the help of a function which is called as the heuristic function so what this heuristic function will do it will explore or it will result a value it will result a value which is going to make uh, make use of the ai agent in order to move from the initial state to the gold state for example think that in this case means during this graph traversing if our motto is to identify the shortest path so what we are doing we are trying to take the help of these heuristic values so whatever the values that i have represented in these circles they are the heuristic values so for our simple understanding we can say that these values are some kind of distances so what do you mean by that the distance from the initial state to this one is 10 and the distance from this initial state and this node is 50 
So if your motto is to identify the shortest path, so we are making the help of these heuristic values. <coughs> okay, so these heuristic values will help us in order to select an appropriate path. Why? Because whenever you apply the rules, you are going to get two possibilities. Why? Because there are two paths that are from this initial state. So which path we need to select? For that one, we are taking the help of this heuristic value, what we obtained by applying this heuristic function. So what I am doing as it is the shortest path identification, so I am going to select 10. Means the AI agent is going to select 10. So what happens in the AI agent position will be here now. So next again, two possibilities are there. So one is telling about 30, one is giving the 30 heuristic value and another one is 20. So in this case, again, it is a shortest path. So the AI agent is going to select this one and he will move to this particular point. Again, from here, there are two possibilities. So the AI agent is going to pick up the shortest distance and he will move to this particular uh, node. And then later on, he will move to this particular point. Okay, so we can say that by using the, by making use of these heuristic values, the AI agent could able to identify the shortest path between the given nodes, that is this path, we can say. Okay, means uh, if you represent this one, what happens? It will become 10 plus 20 plus 10, means it is just 40. So 40 distance is the, sorry, 40 distance is the shortest one between the initial state and the goal state. So this is going to give the uh, shortest distance. Means how we could able to identify the shortest distance between these two, means by making help of this heuristic value. You need to observe one important point here also in this case also we have performed the search activity. So until and unless we perform the search activity we could not able to identify the path between the given states initial state and the goal state. <coughs> okay if you uh, if you find means if you can make use of these heuristic values and perform the search activity then we can say that it is a kind of search activity which is called as informal search where we are going to make use of these heuristic values. Sometimes there will be some uh, identification means uh, some problems which we, where you are not going to get these kind of heuristic values. So even in that case also we are going to perform the search activity. But those search activities we call it as uninformed. Uninformed. Okay. Anyhow we are going to study more clearly about these informed search techniques and uninformed search techniques in the coming modules. Okay, so these are the references that I have used in order to prepare this particular content. Hope you, uh, you have understood what this production systems is and how these production systems are so important for a developer in order to write the uh, program, AI programs. Okay, so uh, this is up to the today's session and we will try to uh, come up with the other important topic from the artificial intelligence. Till now, thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.